Sanders is fresh off participation in the third Democratic presidential debate. It was the first time that he shared the stage with both Senator Elizabeth Warren and also Vice President Joe Biden. Joining us now with how the campaign is feeling about Sanders' performance is campaign senior advisor Chuck Rochek. Good to see you, sir. Good morning. How was it down there in Houston? How'd y'all feel about it? It's always good to be home. It's always good where there's fresh enchiladas and water burgers. So, you know, I like to stay focused on what's important, That's which right. is the food. Indeed. You should. Indeed. Uh, but it was a good night, and it was an interesting debate. And as you were saying, that seeing everybody on the stage at one time, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, our guy had a, a grizzled voice. The, mm -hmm. the, the, He's been working hard. Absolutely. Like, I heard you discuss an age earlier, and yeah. I, I try to stay in shape myself and work out almost every day just to try to keep up with him. Mm -hmm. And age is literally a number, because I've been around around lots of candidates and lots of people, and I can't keep up with Bernie Sanders. And he's 20 years older than me, yeah. and he is sharper than me, and he reads more than me. Like, I'm not saying it because I work for him and he pays me. It's just a fact. I've worked for a lot of folks who've tried to work as hard as him, who ain't half as smart and ain't got near the stamina that he's got. Mm -hmm. Like, it's really something different. I think that's one of the most interesting things about him, Chuck. I mean, everybody was focusing on the voice. I mean, ultimately, what happened? He, he worked too hard, you said? He was so working too hard on the campaign trail? So anybody yeah. who's done campaigns for a little yeah. bit will realize that when you're in front of a lot of people, and every time he's anywhere, he's in front of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And your natural instinct, and this is the hardest thing to correct, and I will take you back to remembering when people used to say that Hillary Clinton used to scream at people. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing, is that you think you have to vocalize loudly because you have so many people in front yeah. of you. Mm -hmm. Well, in Denver, he had 10,000 people uh -huh. right before the debate in front of him, and he spoke to them for over an hour because Bernie loves to talk about the policies. Yeah. And what happens is, is when mm -hmm. you project so much to so many people, it just takes a toll on your vocal cords. That's sure. bottom line, all it is. Yeah. You know, a lot of, and not just this debate when, you know, his voice is hoarse, but every single debate, the, the whole pundit analysis of his performance is he seems angry. He seems angry. Right. What do you say about that? Well, I'll say that he is a little bit angry. And he's angry because he feels like there's a lot of frustration out there with America. And when you go to those rallies that we were talking about, people come up to him and tell him things that make him very angry because it's like nobody's listening to them about whatever issue it may be. I think about an interaction he had with a young dreamer in Las Vegas that really got him emotionally upset thinking about what she was going through as a teenager. You know, he said nobody should go through this, especially a child. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the campaign, more and more and more, and as he feels like he's got an opportunity. He's only given a 30-second window, so he wants, he's very much emotional about getting that message out there can, so people can hear it. Tell us a little bit more about that moment with the Dreamer, because I don't think people see Bernie Sanders very, like, personally emotional very often. It's one of the things on the campaign trail that really have moved Bernie more so than I've ever seen anything move him at all. He's always said the same things. He's always been a stalwart for working people in this country. He's always fought dig diligently for that set of issues. But when you start interjecting children and interjecting personal narratives of what children are going through, Bernie's got grandkids. I've got grandkids, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. There's a special love with children and people. And not that he doesn't love everybody as much as he loves children, but he does love children more, just like I do and we all do. And when you hear a child talking about trying to do what's right and go to school and play by the rules and just wants an opportunity, it really, really has moved Bernie more so than I've ever seen anything move him. Chuck, mm -hmm. tell us how you generally see the rest of the field that and Bernie's role within that after the debate stage. How are you feeling about how you came out of the debate, your relative position uh, relative to everybody else? It's a great question and mm -hmm. right now we're we're in the heart of the game right after Labor Day and Crystal's done this a long time now it's game time it's yeah. after Labor Day as soon as you start seeing people buying TV ads in Iowa you right. know it's game on yeah and everybody's buying TV in Iowa because they're worried about the polls there they're building infrastructure mm -hmm. but we've talked about it on this program before think about the long-term strategy of the grassroots organizing in Iowa there's only 150 170 thousand people that are going to caucus so that one-on-one -on -one interaction on top of the TV commercials on top of the other things that you're doing. But right now is game time. There's a lot of people in offices around the America right now in campaign headquarters trying to figure out how much budget they have, how many staff can they hire, and how much TV can they afford to buy built off of how much are they going to raise. That's happening right now in real time in lots of places because mm. having the money to make it through California, a lot of people are all in in Iowa all in in New Hampshire. And they have no vision past that because they have no budget past that. The real people who will be here for the long term will be the ones who can budget out correctly all the way through California. Yeah. As candidates do start to drop off, how do you see that impacting the dynamics of this race? Like who benefits from folks falling out of this race? I think it's it all depends who drops out. And I don't think they'll have I think there'll be a big narrative in the press, let's be honest. Mm. But I don't think that they will have enough support to really 
shake the race up when somebody gets out. I think as we go further along, I think after the first three states, when you have a mid to upper level person drop out because they're just done and there's no path for them, yeah. then you will see a bigger because then they'll own delegates. And those delegates have to go somewhere for the convention. And that's the key to this whole thing. So if you have a mid-level candidate, I'm not going to mention any names, that drops out and they have a 50 or 60 or 75 delegates from Iowa and through the first four, that's power. That's mm -hmm. negotiating power for that person with the winning or the top two campaigns to say, I'll have my people come with you. We'll get together at the convention. What do you have for me? Right. Chuck, we also saw reports that the New Hampshire state director was removed in the Bernie campaign. Could you just give us some insight into, into that decision and how the campaign is feeling about New Hampshire right now? Oh, we are super excited about New Hampshire. You know, we have over 100 endorsements. We have a lot of staff on the ground. Uh, and you saw the reports. It's just yeah. part of the overall, when I just said Labor Day, everything yeah. starts changing. So we had a great state director there who's built out a great organization. Now we're building out Super Tuesday states. Mm -hmm. He's from Massachusetts. We just put somebody in Maine. We're just building out our Super Tuesday states okay. and then broadening our reach with people who are trained professionals who've already built things. Mm -hmm. So if you've built something in New Hampshire, let's build out other states, and that's exactly what we're doing. So, oh. I mean, the campaign, the, the narrative in the press was that, oh, this is because Bernie's not doing as well in New Hampshire, and you're saying that that's not the case. Oh, uh, no, not yeah. at all, because we are really doing good. So we're actually ramping up. It's just the opposite. We're doing better than we thought, so now we're going to build out off Got of that it. momentum, and mm -hmm. that's why you saw us announce Massachusetts with Joe, with Maine, Minnesota. We have people in Oklahoma. All these Super Tuesday states now, we're putting together real organization. Okay. So another narrative narrative is that New Hampshire is a must, must win for you all. It's a neighboring state, obviously, to Vermont. It's a state that Bernie won easily against Hillary Clinton last time around. Do you see it as a must win? I, we have to do well there. I, I've always wondered if, if we had to win New Hampshire uh, because there's just so many people running. You have Senator Warren just next door right. on each side, right, like bookends with us and her. And she's built out a great organization. I give full credit to her and her team. But I don't know. But we have to do really well. I really feel like Iowa is where all the attention will be because if you've seen anything po through politics, whoever comes out of Iowa gives a really, it's right. one of the few places you, you get really get a bump yeah. when you move into New Hampshire. But if you've done the right thing in New Hampshire, you can actually pull off a of Barack Obama or Bill Clinton, you can do something different there, but I don't see it as like we have to win that, but right now we feel like we're going to. So there's a lot of discussion right now, Chuck, about Elizabeth Warren and Bernie and, and their visions for the country. What do you think that makes him so distinct when you look at Elizabeth Warren? If you watch a lot of the mainstream press, they, they really couldn't tell you the difference. What is the difference in your opinion? Well, the numbers is what yeah. tells me what the differences are. There's a big difference in their supporters, and I think that's where you have to start from. Mm -hmm. And let's start with uh, people of color. Like Bernie Sanders consistently is polling high with people of color, especially with Latinos, and you don't see those numbers being as well for Senator Warren. Uh, white, more affluent, college educated, they more have been supporting yep. Warren. That shows in polling that you see that's public for anybody to look at. That's not disparaging towards her mm -hmm. or towards us. It's just we have different voters right now. Yeah. A lot of our policies are really close and really the same, but our voting block from what we've seen in the states is really different, right? If you Why think, do you think that is? You know, I think that it's the consistency of the messages over time. Plus, people know Bernie more. They yeah. know Bernie more because he ran last time, and we were in those neighborhoods. As much as you wanted to hear the, the, the spin around Bernie's outreach to people of color and how we were lacking here there, we ran a real operation. We had a 35-person African-American outreach team that was doing great work. They didn't get the, the publicity they should have, so you, we're building off of that now. You take that, you have a bigger budget, you have a bigger team. We've already started talking to Latinos in every single state because we have the budget to do that, the infrastructure to do that, and Brown Consultants, which help. <laughs> that does All right. help. Well, Chuck, thank you. So Great to see Thank really you. Thank you. Next on Rising, corn pop wasn't the only thing that was popping in 2020 <laughs> politics this week. We're going to cover all the latest on the Democratic primary with Young Turks. Emma Vigeland when Rising returns.